This is a podcast of Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego. To learn more about how you can support Scripps, visit us online at scripps.ucsd.edu. From generation to generation, the Inupiaq people living along Alaska's North Slope have passed knowledge about the often harsh and unforgiving environment of the extreme north. But now their world is changing. A warming climate is melting ice cover in the Arctic. Gaps in the ice are creating new shipping lanes in the north, as well as opening the door to new oil and gas exploration in an attempt to satisfy the world's hungry energy needs. To help understand some of these changes, in 2006, researchers from John Hildebrand's Whale Acoustics Laboratory at Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego deployed a novel acoustic technology to monitor underwater sound in marine mammal calls in the high Arctic. The scientists hope the information from the instruments will not only help with new understandings of marine mammals in the region, but provide the Inupiaq with new information about their environment in the face of global change. We got interested in the Arctic because of issues of uh, global warming and the fact that the, in the Arctic, um, the marine mammals that are there are, are very dependent on the, the presence of the ice. It sets the tone of the whole ecosystem. Some of the animals are absolutely dependent on there being ice, but I see it as a way of getting a record of what the Arctic is like at this point in time because things are changing. The, you know, the ice is going away. You know, we want to know as new animals come into this area. For instance, there's evidence now that killer whales are moving into the Arctic. And this is an area where they'd never been before. Um, and, and, you know, we worry about ice seals and walrus and what happens to them as the ice retreats. So it's, it's a snapshot in time, you know, an environmental record. And I think it'll have more value as time goes on. Fifty years from now, people can go back to our sound recordings and say, well, that's the way that the Arctic was back in 2006. The High Frequency Acoustic Recording Package, or HARP, was developed at Scripps by Hildebrand and development engineer Sean Wiggins with support from the United States Navy. The instrument is deployed on the ocean floor and contains an underwater microphone and bank of memory disks to collect and learn more about the kaleidoscope of calls, clicks, whistles, moans, and songs from marine animals. So the reason that the harps are so valuable for us and other acoustic recorders is that it allows us to conduct research without the need to be present in that area. And so what's really special about that in the Arctic is it's one of the most remote, extreme environments on the planet. Um, half the year it's covered in darkness and um, full ice cover, which does not allow the access of ships. And so harps are especially useful in the Arctic to give us this long-term picture of what is an entire year like having your ears underwater in the high Arctic. What's interesting about the Arctic, because it's ice covered, traditionally there hasn't been global shipping around compared to the Pacific or the Atlantic. So in the absence of shipping, we can use low frequency sound as a proxy to look at environmental change. Our harps are deployed in an area that is farther offshore than most people have been able to record data to date. So what that allows us is an opportunity to find out how, in, in my, from my part of the study anyway, with marine mammals, to find out how these animals that we already don't know a heck of a lot about in some cases are utilizing an area that is, to date, we haven't been able to study. And so, for example, we find that bowhead whales, these whales that, that migrate back and forth past this area north of Point Barrow, we find that at some times of year, there are more of them passing by even further offshore than our nearer shore instruments. And that's very interesting and important for trying to figure out how, what it, parts of this region are most important to these animals. The Inupiaq people have been subsisting within the Arctic environment for thousands of years and the way they do that is by having a knowledge of their surrounding environment, principally the ice that fasts to the land every year. The Inupiaq culture revolves around the bowhead whale 
because it's such an integral part of why and how they're able to subsist in this type of environment. And when the bowhead whale was listed as an endangered species, the Inupiaq were the first to step up and cooperate and work together with other researchers to help in the study and the conservation of the bowhead. And today we see this animal um, recovering at an incredible pace. I think that we have a lot to learn from not only the Inupiaq people adapting to change, but also as we look very closely at these marine mammals, I think what we find is that they adapt very quickly to change as well. And so the more that we can learn from Inupiaq people and the more that we can learn from marine mammals about how they're adapting to these changes, the better off we'll all be in trying to figure out what we do about it. Along with cutting edge science, the Arctic Project also gave the Scripps Whale Acoustics Laboratory an opportunity to use oceanography to reach and inspire young students. An education and outreach program called SeaTech is giving Native Alaskan students an opportunity to learn the ins and outs of acoustic science while helping them understand their neighboring Arctic environment and its marine mammal inhabitants. In its current form, SeaTech at Mount Edgecombe is an oceanography class. The second part of the SeaTech program really deals with giving a, a depth of experience to, to working in oceanography. And we do that through a four credit uh, independent study program at the Mount Edgecombe High School where students learn how to analyze our acoustic data and then they go and look for the distinctive sounds of the species of marine mammals in the Arctic from that, from that acoustic data set. The educational value of the SeaTech program is uh, pr it's priceless. SeaTech allows students to really explore new science and actual data and doing real science. You don't know what you're going to find. And I think that's the beauty of the program is that the students are doing something that they think that's valuable. It's not just, I'm going to learn about photosynthesis today. I'm going to go and look at this acoustic data and I'm going to learn something that maybe no one else has ever seen about some marine mammal. Empowering students with that kind of uh, that kind of research is is just invaluable. We are in Anchorage because we are presenting a poster at the Alaska Marine Science Symposium. We did our project on the seasonal occurrence of bowhead whale calls in the Chukchi Sea. Working with data that is based in Alaska makes me feel more connected to my culture. Being Inupiaq native, we focus mainly on bowhead whales because it's a big part of our culture. Analyzing the data does take a long time, but it's rewarding in the end because you come up with an amazing project that shows really what high school students can do. This has been a presentation of Scripps Institution of Oceanography at UC San Diego.